being yelled at by clerks when I walk in their store without using hand sanitizer first and not wearing a mask. I tell them I'm doing my best to follow their guidelines to do what they ask. But before leaving, I tell them next time, please relax. My reflexes are still programmed to grocery shopping protocol of the very recent past. You're a clerk, not a cop, so quit being so bossy. It's not very nice. I understand there's a lot of fear going around, but please don't forget to be polite. Where did you go? My boxing gym. Where did you go? The music venue slams. Where did you go? My August Hall show. Where did you go? My San Francisco. Sparks, Nevada. I walked into the bus station. There was a payphone in there. It didn't work, but it was nice to look at. Enclosed in vintage ash, nostalgia, nostalgia. Payphone saved my ass so many times when I was young. Saved me from getting mugged over the corner of Turk and something. Rain was pouring and guys were closing in on me and my New Year's flame. I told her, make a call fast, I got your back. And within a minute, up pulled a taxi. All the funny payphone memories from when I was younger and dumber. I once called my dad from a roadside payphone in Tennessee when I'd fallen in love. I told him, Dad, I've fallen in love, and I'm getting married. He humored me and said, how long have you known her? I said, a month. He was chuckling. He said, well, Mark, let me know when you've planned your wedding. A few weeks later, I wasn't with that girl no more. I could hear in my dad's voice on that payphone that I was a smitten. Pussy whipped kid. I didn't know it then, but my dad did because he was my dad, old and wise, and he knew me better than anyone else did. From there, a short trip to Reno, Nevada. The bus station was closed, but I was so happy to see people of color gathering. They were sitting on benches outside the bus station in downtown Reno. The sun was glaring on the cement contrasting with the far off Sierra snow cap mountains. I saw three payphones inside, but the cops wouldn't let me in. I said, Can I please use a payphone to get a sip of water from the water fountain? They said, Hey, you, move along. And when I left, I saw a nervous young man crying. A lost soul with no nowhere to go. He just The cops said, everybody beat it, everybody get lost now, move along. As I walked back, I said, hey my friend, look down, there's some cash, grab it quickly. And that he did. Who knows what happened to him, maybe he found work on a privately owned exotic animal zoo. Maybe he hitchhiked his way from Reno, Nevada to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Traveling from bus station to bus station Maybe he's fine I heard a woman telling him That she pray for him And from there we drove To the Truckee River 
People were picnicking happy as can be on that April afternoon. I climbed halfway up an overhanging tree where I stood and took a picture of the slow flowing Truckee River. And from downtown Truckee, we drove through Donner's Pass where people ate each other up and further down the 82 emigrant gap. When we pulled in, there was a long cabin like structure. She parked while I stepped outside and took a peek and saw people watching a strange film. The portion I saw was a close up of a woman's skin. A kind man stepped outside and said, How can I help you, sir? I said, we saw a sign for a payphone at the exit. He said, that payphone's been gone a long time. I said, what's going on in there? He said, we're showing a film because of our absent lecturer. I said, is he absent because of certain guidelines? And he said, yeah, we're showing a film instead. Maybe drop by another time. I said, what is this place anyhow? He said, it's a rehabilitation center. A 13-month program ranging from people with drug and alcohol problems and also for people suffering with depression. I said, now that part interests me. Now you've got my attention. He told me the website when I left. He said, God bless you. And safe travels, man. I said, what did you just say? He said, yeah, that's right. We're a Christian-based program for 18 years old and over. I said, that's a very large age span. He said, well, 18 is adult. I said, I see just like prisons. When you're 18, you share the same structure as senior citizens. I said, well, who knows? One day, they could have counted me in. I'm intrigued by the part about depression. Well, I'm not interested in the part about your religion. Plus it's too close to the Donner Party happened. Plus this place kind of reminds me of the Shannings. He said, well, may I remind you, I didn't come to you, you came to me. You knocked on my door, I didn't knock on yours. And I got in the car and I asked Caroline, does this place strike you as a kind of place of 13 months of time would be healing? Or does it strike you as sort of culty? And that kind of time in the snowbound place could mess with your mind. up in cold fast and ordered pizza and we were mesmerized by a young lady twirling pizza dough and two lovebirds behind the counter were giggling and flirting while working away on their many pizza orders to go young love is so beautiful and painful and mysterious wondering where will it go? Will she go off to college and meet somebody new and break his heart while he's back in Colfax sprinkling cheese on pizza dough? Will they have five children and live happily ever after in Colfax? Who knows? Will they leave town in an old Honda Civic and get married somewhere along the Pacific and live in a house in Mendocino with a yard full of abalone shells? Get divorced, she's chasing him down for child support and alimony. Well, young love is so beautiful and painful and mysterious. Where will it go? Young love is so beautiful and painful and mysterious. Where will it go? Young love is so beautiful and painful and mysterious. Where will it go? Young love is so beautiful and painful and mysterious, where will it go? I said, thank you, Caroline, for this road trip to Sparks and Reno. It was nice to go to the American and Truckee rivers and skip stones and see old pay phones and drive along six foot high mountains of snow. up 
in the morning next to you muted sunshine pouring through and from my bedroom So many trees reaching for the sky, Italian pines and redwoods and sequoias and oaks so green. And like a magnet, I'm drawn to you. Like an anchor cast into the ocean from a ship, I fall into you. I hear my garden calling me. The begonia. Lavender, the violas, and the lilies, and the California poppies, and the morning glories, and my herb garden full of parsley, various men. Let's go take a walk along the Johnny Cash Trail. We'll splash around in the American River. We'll walk across the bridges and through the Central California hills. And walk by Folsom Prison. I heard. Shouldn't I did some time in there? It made me hurt when in the documentary he said, How could it be me? Park was worth more alive than dead. And now I'm laying on my couch, on my wraparound porch. A distraught friend's coming over Her and her husband are talking divorce I've made the guest room nice for her Fresh pillowcases and clean sheets And I put a blue vase in the window Full of morning glories And I'm rereading nine stories As we wait for her I haven't read it since my early twenties Oh, that's right See more glass, see more glass. Lost his mind on this planet. He wasn't meant to last. And in the story, Uncle Wiggily in Connecticut, I'd forgotten about how Eloise cried to Mary Jane in the end. When she remembered the girl from school. Making fun of her brown and yellow dress.
worry reading for Esme with love and squalor. I thought I'm a little bit like Henry Miller and a little bit like J.D. Solinger. I'm like Solinger in that I like my solitude and my privacy. And I'm like Miller in that I can also be gregarious and fairly good socially. Like both of them, I'm funny and to the point. Like both of them, I can pull your heartstrings. But overall, I'm more like Miller in that I write autobiographically. Direct and reckless, Sandra goes for the heart. Miller goes for the solar plexus. And I close the book when my friend pulls up the driveway. She's in tears and I show her to her room. She tells me that she'll be hiding away. And Caroline goes up to the bedroom. And we kiss goodnight And I tell her and my friend downstairs That I'll be nearby On the patio next to a pack of cigarettes Looking up at the stars in the sky The breeze is my euphoric scent of mountain pines Watering Spanish faces full of succulents and weeds and cacti And a part of me is living But a part of me feels like it has died All I know is that the atmosphere tonight is all mine Downstairs is one of my best friends Upstairs is the love of my life And I'm out here under the porch light Looking out for both of them Like Atticus Finch on the courthouse steps Tom Robinson The world is at once So painful and uncertain And yet sublime All I know for sure Is that the atmosphere tonight Is all mine I'm rereading another story Pretty mouth and green my eyes
William McGirt. William McGirt. William McGirt. William McGirt. trip to Nevada City. It had been years since I had been there. I thought it might provoke a negative reaction. She does all the driving. We'd been taking a lot of trips to Walmart and places like that. But she was up for it. Being around the house on a spring day is nice, but it's been more or less the same routine every day. Gardening, cooking, reading, watching movies, which is wonderful. Especially to share the time with somebody that you love. It's nice to get away once in a while. After 28 years of touring, having the year 2020 off has found me restless. I'm used to crossing the country a few times a year, and crossing the ocean sometimes three or four times a year. I've made peace with this unexpected time off. I'm very much not alone. I gotta admit, my breathing has been off since mid-March, and I get a little bit panicky at night. Some people have said, put your music on Bandcamp, you're gonna be okay. I know that I'll be okay, but I feel like a shark that's been swimming through the ocean for 28 years. It's been yanked out, thrown onto the shore, and told, don't worry, you'll be good. Just flip around in the sand for a while, then we'll throw you back in the ocean in about a year or so and you'll be swimming around again good as new some others say hey there's a lot of streaming going on right now streaming when I think of the word streaming I think of exactly that streams those thin flowing overlooked trails of water that dry up in the summer those things that you see underneath footbridges that you look down at for a second you see some mosquitoes swarming Maybe a few rusty beer cans laying next to some mossy rocks. A few minnows swimming around. You can tell your girlfriend's thinking, Why are you looking at the stream? And then you keep walking. The reason I always stopped to look at streams is because I used to go to one when I was a kid to catch crayfish. I got nice memories of those times. The way you catch crayfish is by putting a paper cup just behind the crayfish with your left hand and stick your index finger from your right hand just in front of it. You'd think the crayfish would nip at your finger, but it actually jumps backwards into the paper cup and that's how you'd scoop them up out of the stream. I bring them back to my house and put them in an aquarium full of water. And one day my mom got really mad at me because a few had gotten out and died and made the basement stink. My mom made me go back to the stream and let the rest of them go. Later in life, I was looking for real estate and a real estate agent told me, never buy a house that's near a stream. I said, what's wrong with streams? She said, they attract rats. So yeah, band camp makes me think of camping, which is a fun thing to do until I could afford hotels. And streaming now makes me think of, because of that real estate agent, rats. But all this is gonna have to do for the time being. Oh my God, how I wanna sing to a crowd. To fist bump everyone in the front row. Hear myself holding a long falsetto note Reverberating around the room and putting everybody in the spell To hear their applause, to hear them laugh at my jokes To share my words with that little demographic of the world Whom I love, and I know that they love me back stars align, I know that my purpose on this earth is right there in that time. I was recently asked to sing, I left my heart in San Francisco. 
something Willie Brown related And I said no Because I didn't leave my heart in San Francisco I left my heart all over the fucking place Going back and forth between San Francisco and a mountain town has been wearing thin Yeah, I love working in the garden I love taking walks I've seen the roses and the redwood trees And the blue morning glories that are short-lived in the spring My God, my soul needs something more Out here in the mountains I need destinations besides graveyards and Home Depot The one place in town that makes decent nice tea And in tea. San Francisco I need a little more than walks along the cement and Watching young people whizzing by on bikes in their jogging clothes Making me feel like a stalling car about to break down on the side of a road And some of my favorite places are boarded up with plywood Goddamn, Pancho's on Polk Street is closed, it's empty That was Nathan's favorite place, he ate there two times a day And American Cleaners is closed Jenny did my dry cleaning for 32 years saying goodbye to her Hurt so much, what a blow to my stomach Walking away from the corner of Washington High It hurt so much, saying goodbye to her So we got on the 49 and headed to Nevada City I've been on that road so many times But I was really opening my eyes this time Looking for a story I saw a sign that said something about equestrian I asked Caroline, what does equestrian mean? She said it had something to do with horses There were beautiful yellow forsythias along the winding road and I saw a lot of the usual sights Cows, turkeys, and Canadian geese And signs for cool, Marshall, and Lone Star Road And of course the American River was flowing to the east There were the usual signs for river access But most of them had roadblocks So nobody could park their cars We stopped in Auburn The place we liked to eat there was closed We went to get iced tea And they made me use my card My cash is no good in San Francisco and even in downtown Auburn to my cash they said no by the time we got to Grass Valley we were hungry so we parked the car downtown and I pointed out the Holbrook Hotel but like many hotels now I was under renovation I told Caroline how was at that hotel where I finished unfinished songs for the Sun Kill Moon album April how I spent at least a week holed up there she asked me where'd you eat around here I told her I couldn't remember I told her I was so busy trying to finish unfinished songs I didn't have much of a memory of what else I did in Grass Valley Besides sitting in bed and over third and fourth verses of six month old songs I was agonizing So we found this restaurant that had the word conscious in it To order takeout, there wasn't much else open on the menu, they had the word hummus up there three times. So I told the kid behind the counter, I'd like a plate of hummus with pita bread. He said, well, the hummus comes in a bowl. You can have a choice of beef, chicken, chickpeas, or some other shit, I don't remember what it was, on top of the hummus. I said, I'll pay whatever, but I don't want the hummus covered in anything. He said, but it comes in a bowl. I said, look, I'll pay whatever, but man, I just want the hummus. I like my hummus to just be hummus. He looked really confused. A competent person working behind him, the only other person working there, clearly looked like she knew what was going on in the place, but he was too busy being confused to ask her anything. Caroline made the mistake of telling him, I'll have the exact same thing that he's having. The guy started pecking away on the digital cash register for several minutes. His index finger was pecking all over the place, like a little kid sitting down at a piano for the first time in their life. I gave Caroline $50 and said, I'll be outside when this thing is over. And what's with fucking bowls? When did the world decide it was a good marketing plan to put everything in a fucking bowl? When I was a kid, the only thing you put in a bowl was cereal. What happened to hummus plates? She said, I know, relax, I'll meet you outside. So I go sit down on a bench and she brings me the food and both bowls of hummus are covered in greasy fucking chicken. I said, God damn it, that dumb motherfucker. There were only two people working in there. Why didn't he talk to the smart looking woman who was doing the cooking? The only thing that kid was conscious of was the fucking cash register. Why do you have to push that many fucking buttons for hummus and pita bread? What's this world coming to when a kid can't trust a human being over a machine? God damn it.
So I'm eating, I'm pushing the chicken out of the way with my plastic fork, and hummus is spilling all over my shirt and pants. I said, God damn it, I'm so tired of eating on benches outside and spilling food all over my goddamn shirts. From there we went to Nevada City. to Nevada City, we drove along Broad Street and I pointed to the National Hotel, a hotel where I once spent a night under some thin blankets on a cold winter night, it was also under renovation. We drove around the town and I showed her a house that I thought about buying at one time, the tiniest house on the east side of Broad, near downtown, but it had renters living in it. If I bought it, I'd have to pay off the renters to move out. And I wouldn't feel right about doing something like that. I didn't want to get on the wrong foot in a town that has a bunch of guys who look like Charles Manson living in it. When I say Charles Manson, I don't mean it in a derogatory way. I just mean that seems to be the look that they're going for. That's right. Like the other times I visited Nevada City, every guy I saw looked like Charles Manson. Every girl looked like they put a spell on you if you broke up with them. All the houses in the downtown area looked like they were built in the mid to late 1800s, kept up nicely. On this spring day, all the trees were in full bloom with an array of mostly pink and white flowers. I've been to a lot of places. Nevada City is one of the most charming little towns I've ever seen. It was nice to imagine the town during the gold rush before pickup trucks were invented, before it became one of the most progressive mountain towns in the Sierras. I saw a payphone in front of a market, took a few photos and said, everything in this town is closed and hardly anybody is out. Let's get out of here. She said, okay, yeah, I'm tired. Just after we left town, we saw a sign for a campground. I said, let's pull in there. Now that I've signed up to band camp, I want to see what a campground looks like again. I've been to a campground since the 1990s, and I remember they'd have payphones near the restrooms. The restrooms were always made of these huge concrete bricks. We pulled in and all the entrances were gated up, but the exit wasn't. I could see a concrete restroom that may have had a payphone beside it. If I could just get a better look, Caroline parked in the parking lot. We got out of the car and we were walking towards the exit to enter when a car came out of the campground at full speed and stopped just as we were about to enter through the exit. The driver asked, can I help you? I said, yeah, we're looking for a payphone. She said, try the gas station across the way over there. I said, okay. We got in the car and Caroline said, that woman was mean. I said, nah, she's just doing her job. They probably hired her to patrol the place so the Manson family looking people don't take over the campground. She said, no, I don't think that's it. I think they're doing some kind of secret experiments back there or something. That's what kind of experiment she was talking about. She said, I don't know, secret experiments on animals or something. On her way back, we pulled into a gas station somewhere. There was an old man standing there with a big smile eyes as blue as Paul Newman's. He was sunburnt and dry as an old desert lizard. I got out of the passenger seat and asked him what town we were in. He said, Auburn. I said, Auburn? I don't know this part of Auburn. I asked him where he lived. He said in a ragged, dehydrated voice like Papillon's by the time he got to Devil's Island. Well, I'm homeless, but I live here, yeah. I asked him how he was doing. He said, I don't know. What's going on? I don't know what's happening. I don't know where my right side is. I think I just woke up. I don't know where my right side is. He was standing upright, but he did seem off balance somehow. He was kind of falling forward. I said, yeah, the world's turned upside down right now and things are really fucked up. He said, I don't know about that. All I know is that my hands are dirty and my arms are dirty. And sometimes I'm holding something and it drops and hits my feet. 
and it explodes up into my face like <laughs> and he made an explosion sound like that <laughs> and then he said the same thing again my hands and arms are so dry and dirty and I'm thirsty I said you're what? he said I'm thirsty I said what do you want to drink? he said oh anything a soda or some water anything I got two bottles of water and gave him the blue one my god, that guy had the bluest eyes, cool hand Luke Blue. Before I left, I asked him what his name was. He said, William, William McGurk. Caroline and I left, and she asked what the guy said. I told her, and then I asked her, what do you think happens to a guy like that? I mean, how's the guy who looks like Steve McQueen has a movie star named like William McGirt end up standing at the side of a gas station like that? Caroline said it could be anything, mental illness maybe. I told her that he could have asked me to buy him anything and I would have bought it. But all he said was a soda or some water. He didn't ask for a bottle of whiskey or a case of beer. That guy was interesting. We drove along the 49 past all the Forsythias again and now the American River was to our west. I said to Caroline, I'm so stuffed from all that thick pita bread. I think I'm gonna skip dinner tonight. Yeah, I'll probably snack on something. I don't feel like cooking tonight. Just as we were passing Coloma, she said, What is it about this land that caused a bunch of gold to be under it? I looked to my right and gazed out the window for about 20 seconds, looking at a market, a gas station, and some little mini mall and some trees. Then I looked straight ahead and said, I don't know. William McGirt William McGirt William McGirt Boxed. 30 minutes today, then I walked to the San Francisco Bay, took a photo of a seagull and the Golden Gate, came back and shadow boxed another few rounds with three pound weights. I got on the phone with my dad, oh, I want to see my dad so, so bad, but I can't see him. Can't this time he's getting up there and visiting him would be viewed as a heinous crime during this holding pattern springtime so yeah we got we got on the phone we talked about what's happening in Ohio his favorite Chinese restaurant is closing up the latest news he grabs and moans long slow spring I know it's gonna bring us together sing long slow spring long slow spring I know it's gonna bring us together sing long slow spring he asked when are you touring again I said Fuck if I know, he said, well, what are you doing now with your time? I said, I'm recording some music at the studio, watering my gaves and my aloes, calling up my friends and saying hello. Yesterday, we went to Point Reyes, the beach was closed, but we snuck in anyway. We went fishing for perch, we used prawns as bait, others were fishing for stripes, a man or a race. Surfing and the sunbathers were laying so fine on their beach blankets, girls in bikinis sporting their Gucci shades. Long, slow spring, I know it's gonna bring us together. Singing. Long, slow spring, long, slow spring, I know it's gonna bring. Us together sitting 
long, slow spring. shipwreck boat and marked up on my dad a postcard and I wrote that I loved him and missed him and that I hoped to see him before too long in Ohio long day I got back and watered my succulents on the back porch and I smoked a couple of cigarettes and watched one of my favorite comfort films about Schmidt my favorite line life is short and deep I can't afford to waste another minute that's how I feel in this life every minute that I'm in it this morning I hear the morning doves cooing on I'm lying in bed flipping between the Dombier Smith's boot period and looking up at the ceiling it's when the sun's coming up that this anxious feeling dissipates and I can focus on readings at this time that my heart's not beating as fast as it does in the evenings at this time of the day that I'm calmly breathing when the sun's coming up Everything feels okay when the sun's coming up I know the world has made it to another day I'm gonna meet Caroline in Chinatown We're gonna get some, them some Take out and go to Washington Square And sit down on a bench and through the city Wander around Long, slow spring Things will be changing Bringing us closer, sing Long, slow spring, long, slow spring, things will be changing, bringing us closer, singing, long, slow spring. Saturday Night Live, I listened to some music by Egyptian guitarist Omar Khorshid. Omar picks single strings with blazing speed that you hear from surfer guitars, but the music is more exotic. It made me think of being in restaurants in places like Israel and Greece. I fell asleep and dreamed that I was on tour with Ben, Phil, and Jim. We were playing what may have been the final show of a tour because our sound check was short. The venue was small with a low ceiling. It may have been Switzerland. Or maybe it was the sound check and not the actual show because there were only three people in the crowd. I remember we were playing very fast and there was so much room out on the floor that they were using the space dancer from one end of the room to the other. They were dancing very fast, the way that Omar Khorshid plays. We got off stage and my energy was spent from the show. Backstage was a table with a white tablecloth. Ben and I went over there and he asked me, how are you doing? smells like when we were kids road tripping to Pennsylvania and West Virginia and to the cry baby bridge the Vietnam veterans bridge 
which crosses the ravine You look out and all you see is serene green Trees going on for days and days South Lake Tahoe that way, Sacramento and San Francisco the other way. This car feels like it's been lived in, like there have been good times in here, and all kinds of sacrilege. This car has so many miles, it's been on so many pilgrimages. Who knows where it's went? Who knows where it's been? This car reminds me of young road trips. Listen to Jimi Hendrix, Rainbow Bridge, and Robin Trower's Bridge of Sighs. The sun don't shine. The moon don't move The way he bends his strings Sounds like a scorned person crying Tonight we'll be crossing The Vietnam Veterans Bridge On our way to San Francisco on Memorial Day I should have been in Sweden or Norway But things didn't work out that way this May it's nice to be sharing time with you, though. It's nice to get away. Being around the house so much reminds me of being a kid. I know my way around the yard, every blackberry bush, every rose bush, every inch of my bedroom, every garbage can lid. Every fern, every flower, every tree trunk, every spigot. I knew a red squirrel named Fox. I knew an albino squirrel named Edgar. I knew a brown squirrel named James. I knew a black squirrel named Willis. And when we crossed the Vietnam Veterans Bridge, I think of the word Vietnam. I was born in 1967. I heard it every day until I was 11. My mama dropped me off in downtown Ken, Ohio to play chess At a chess club I'd be sitting there with Vietnam vets I remember their army jackets and their Marlboro red cigarettes Though I was a kid they treated me like an adult They treated me with kindness and respect I remember sitting on the cement steps, California dreaming, waiting for my mom to pick me up and take me home. Just a kid with a bunch of guys who looked like John Voight and coming home. And here I am on my roof looking at the Golden Gate Bridge. Reflecting on my life and all that has led me from those young road trips to this. Grateful for you, for with you my life is bliss. Ah, remembering young road trips. Tonight it's raining and the mountains are misty Reminding me of winter time Strange that it's late spring and the firewood is burning Strange that it's spring and that in a hotel room Across an ocean I'm not tossing and 
I awoke and I arose and said to you, let's go see Rose. Rose gives the best haircut in all of Elk Grove. And she's as funny as any person I know. She says, who in the fuck in this world only knows how to do one job? If you only know how to do one job in this world, you're fucked. Learn how to change a tire. Learn how to draw blood. I said, Rose, I gotta tell you, that comment, it stings. For I only have one job. I play guitar and sing. She said, well, that's two jobs you can do, ding a -ling. I said, well, I'm also a songwriter. She said, well, there you go, that's three. I said, yeah, but all the theaters and churches and nightclubs are closed. She said, what are you talking about? Everything's closed. The dentist offices are closed, and the places that sell clothes. Even the dry cleaners are closed. Jake Pruitt's closed. I said, so how are you staying in business, Rose? She said, I'm creative. I know the ins and outs, and I'm in with the cops, you know. I said, how do you suggest that I reopen, Rose? She said, keep playing and singing, and before you know it, you'll be back on your toes. While the rest of the world is battling it out and shaming each other, county to county, stay in your lane, exercise your mind and grow. And in that moment I awoke and I arose. And I told her, thank you for the haircut, Rose. And then we drove on past the whispering oaks past the galloping horses and that kite road Elk Grove the home of track tones Elk Grove homo sekis fish tacos Elk Grove, South Sacramento Elk Grove, the home of my old friend Rome Sitting on my porch next to a blue and white Chinese vase Full of red and white salvia and lavender And wild yellow aster picked from a storybook landscape And a copy of John Fontaine's Ask the Dust With the Mayan princess Arturo Bandini is in love The Mayan princess, Arturo Bandini, is in love. He's in love, but he doesn't know how to show it. Every time he tries, he insults her, and he ends up blowing it. And when she tells him just how much she hates him, Tells her that he's proud to be raided by her hatred. To 
Today we walked into town, the rose petals were falling, the lilies were turning brown, while the spireas were turning fluorescent pink. All the way up to the foothills where the houses overlook the Sierra mountain peaks. And from my porch, I saw two paramedics outside, just down the block. I told you they were there, and I went outside to watch. Later on, you asked me, what did I see? I said I had to stop looking. I don't have an ounce of voyeurism in me. What's happening over there, I am not meant to see. Tonight's another beautiful night and I'll be up until dusk Reading John Fontes as the dust Beside you sporting a fresh haircut Grateful for my city water and that I'm not on septic I've ever known who's been on septic complains relentlessly that septic is hectic and I'm laying awake wondering about who is being carried off by paramedics I went vocational in high school and not academic I didn't choose to be a songwriter, it's just what I am, and I know that I've not perfected it. Is this song compelling? Do you find it copacetic? Whatever it is, it's what I do, and you can expect more of it. Dead weeds from the late spring heat 
That's what the mountains look like today And boats are sailing out along the white waves In the silver water Fishing boats and sailboats And all kinds of barges My favorite barge is enormous The colors are white and navy The name of the barge
After a while, we came upon the Delta Farmer's Market and we parked. Sat on a bench and watched a man playing and singing with all his heart. While Caroline gathered strawberries, cherries, and tangerines. She was done shopping, I said, let's listen to this guy finish this beautiful song he's singing. And when he finished, the young bloods get together. He explained that the song was timeless. so much political sense every ten years or less We arrived in Isleton parked along Main Street and we walked up and down Saw a lot of old Chinese signage. Most of the stores were closed. It was practically a ghost town. We browsed an antique shop. I asked a woman there about the town's history. That it's an old Chinese town That pickers used to live there And that it was flooded in the early 70s And that it went belly up And the real estate market crashed I said, well, what goes on in this town? She said, not a lot There are two places in this town that do well selling pot and other things that go with pot and whatnot. At the end of the road, we saw a family fishing down a dirt bank. On the bank of the delta, two young boys with their mom and their dad. They each had two poles and they were using anchovies for bait with one. While they used lures with the other, it was fun watching the kids cast. Their dad was covered to the hilt in tattoos, his name was Hugo. We talked to them for quite a while, but one of the kids eventually said, Our dad hates to watch us fish. Hugo then explained that they weren't his kids and that they were his friends. That his friend had a fishing accident where he took a cast with a lure with two treble hooks and they got caught in his hand. That he had to have his hand all stitched up and that their dad wouldn't even come along to hold a net. When I asked about their little poodle, he said, that's not mine, that's their mom's. And he spoiled. At one point, one of the kids got snagged, and their mother told Hugo, jump in there and unsnag it. He jumped to it. Hugo was charismatic. We asked him about the Delta and what kind of fish were in the river. He said, pike, catfish, striped bass, sturgeon, and largemouth bass and striped bass hybrid. We talked and talked and he gave us more history of the town. He 
He said he was born and raised there. He said, yeah, we go to the Bay Area every then and now. But I'd like to come back here where it's quiet. I live a simple life. I could see it in his eyes, his contentment. He was comfortable in his skin. He was zen-like. I asked him what's the main demographic of people here in Isle 10. He said we used to get a lot of traffic from the Crawdad and Chinese Festival tourism. But they moved that to another area. I said, well, what kind of people live here? He said people who like to steal stuff and things like that. Hugo was everything but a bull. He said the police got discouraged with the town and there's no police department anymore. We told the family how nice it was to meet them and wish them happy fishing. Hugo asked us our names. He said, you guys should try the Miwa room. They have all kind of beer. Not like this beer that I'm holding, but beer that they make. We told him okay. Caroline and I went to the Miwa room and shared an N.A. beer. The place used to be an opium den and a brothel. There were all kinds of old Chinese liquor bottles around the room and framed photos of the town from way, way back. We talked to the bartender. He was friendly. He told us to go check out the old towns of Walnut Grove and Locke. Old Chinese towns, he said, with buildings slanted like this. He was holding his hands up in a slightly to the left vertical position. There we drove to Locke and Walnut Grove, and I fell in love with Locke. It was like an old town out of a western that was once owned and run by Chinese. We went to two antique shops. We saw some cute kittens in one, and I bought some Pacific pottery in another. There were all these old dilapidated structures, abandoned offices, and stores. I told Caroline, imagine moving to a town like this way, way back from another country when it was fully populated because of a job you were offered or you were an exchange student or something and you ended up marrying someone from here when you were young and you never left you stayed here throughout your entire life it's the only version of california you ever knew you lived there and died there you know what i mean this town is so surreal and uncalifornia like it's like no place i've ever seen she said those words you just said put them in a song Envelopes full of cash for the 
last six weeks, every time I fall asleep, I dream of being on stage, racing to a hotel or to a venue to sound check. After the tour part of the dream, the dream changed to me, standing in a field across from Peter Frampton. Only Peter was black, not white. There were a group of people in a circle around us who seemed to be entranced by our conversation. He asked me how things were going with music. I felt embarrassed, like, compared to him, how could I enlighten him on anything regarding music? He's a guy I learned that Dad got tuning from, from his song Penny for Your Thoughts. I turned it around and said, Peter, I'm more interested in hearing about how it's going with you. He started to answer and I interrupted him and said, Peter, when I was a kid, a copy of Frampton Comes Alive was in every single home in my neighborhood, or probably in every home in the entire world for that matter. Some of my favorite memories are of being a kid, listening to those songs like Show Me The Way and Lines On My Face, you know, when my voice started to quiver hugged each other, a long, strong hug, and I started crying uncontrollably. I continued talking to him, you know, listening to those songs as a kid, way back, before all the bullshit happened. I woke up, my eyes and pillow full of tears. I held Caroline and said, I just had the most beautiful dream.